Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here at Baxter Cycle in the mighty metropolis of Marnie, Iowa and check out what we have today. One of the most beautiful Royal Enfields on the market today in my opinion. Royal Enfield Bullet 350, check that out. I own a 350 Classic that I just love and I've never thought of trading it off until I saw the bullets. And these things, they, uh, they're just absolutely gorgeous in every single way. Just check that thing out. Fabulous lines, excellent paint. Hand, you know, hand painted stripes, the badging, just an amazing motorcycle. This one has a custom, well, we'll go over what it's got. So what is a bullet? It's a 349 cc, single overhead cam, single cylinder, two valve, air cooled, coil cooled engine, has a five speed transmission. Engine puts out about 20 horsepower, about uh, 20 foot pounds of torque. That's about, that's about 27 Newton meters. This one's got all kinds of goodies added to it. On the front, it's got 41 millimeter tubes that are covered. Hey, check this out. Does that show up in the video? There's speckles of gold all over in there. I had never noticed that before. Wow, I hope that's showing. Uh, 5.1 inches of travel, that's about 130 millimeters. 300 millimeter disc on the front with a dual piston Bybury caliper. It's got uh, 190, 19 tire on the front. Check that out, spoke wheels, chrome spokes. Absolutely gorgeous. All of this is metal, by the way. Check out all that sparkling in there. I had never noticed that before. Lots of gold in there. Absolutely amazing. It's got this front end nacelle, you know, with the with the uh, pilot's eye, pilot eyes or cat's eyes. Absolutely beautiful. Running over here to the rear, it's got a dual shock system on the back with about three and a half inches of travel. It's about 89 millimeters. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. Look at all that chrome. This one has a chrome pipe, a light colored engine, about a 270 millimeter disc on the rear with a single piston Bybury caliper. Chain drive, of course. This one has a different fender than the classic also. It has a different angle right here. The back tire is a 120-80-18, unspoke again. Seat height with a stock seat, this is not a stock seat, it is 31.7 inches, that's about 105 millimeters. Wheelbase is 54.7 inches, that's about 1,389 millimeters. Fuel tank is 3.4 gallons, about 13 liters. Wet weight, wet weight, 430 pounds, or about 195 kilograms. Now, just check this thing out. All kinds of beautiful everywhere, and I just got to... First, I'm going to say, I just noticed the sparkles in here. I mentioned that earlier already. I talked about the hand-painted pinstriping. This gorgeous badge. It's a chrome badge, red writing in the center here with a chrome outline, the gold, the little crown. This crown has gold in it. One of the other ones had black in the, in the crown. Absolutely gorgeous detail right there. And the same thing carries on down here. Absolutely beautiful. This is a pinstripe too. Beautiful thing. One of the differences between this one and the classic is this is a square versus an oval. Um, the handlebars are taller. It's got a different seat, and I already mentioned the fender on the rear. Look at that thing just glistening in the sun. Other things that they've done to this particular bike, they've added the uh, crash bar in the front. They've got this neat little tank bag. They've got these saddlebags in the back. I'm not sure what those are. Trip machine. Very nice looking bags. And they put this Royal Enfield touring seat on the back. Check that out. We are going to check that out. We're going to take this little hot rod for a run. Jumping up here, we've got this beautiful nacelle, cassette, whatever you want to call it. You know, this harkens back to the days gone by. The only gauge you really have is the speedometer. In there, there is a battery light, a fuel light, a neutral light. Down here, there's this little tiny LED. Got an LED uh, fuel gauge in here, digital fuel gauge, a clock right there. Then using this button over here, you can change this little detail right here from clock to odometer, trip meter one to trip meter two, back to clock we'll leave it on that but check out isn't that just a neat little detail here and then these little lights you can't see them but they're on right now over here you can put things like a trip nav or a little tachometer and things like that if you want that one, one of the differences between this and the classic is this also has taller bars and we'll talk about that as we ride i love the levers on these bikes very comfortable you know they're thin through here they're wide through here they're radius they got that nice dog leg and they work really well with these amal grips very good feeling we've got the information button here Flash to pass button, low beam, high beam, blinker right there, horn right there. And then I always forget to mention this, but there is a USB port right here, waterproof. It's covered and it's only active when the bike's running. At least that's how it is on my classic. On this side, we've got the kill switch. We're going to turn the key off here. The run switch and then the start switch. Hazard lights right there, fuel, and then of course the brake lever. Again, that beautiful lever. Just a beautiful place to be. All right, my friends, I think I'm going to put on some gear and we're going to take that Beautiful, shiny little hot rod for a ride. Wahoo! For a little spin around in a circle here, see how that does. 54.7 inch wheelbase, I think I said. I can't remember what that was in millimeters. 1,365 maybe? 
Wahoo! I love these little bikes. I have a classic 350, which is pretty close to the same thing as this. Maybe not quite as good looking. A little plainer, maybe. But still, an absolutely beautiful bike. And it's one of my favorite motorcycles of all times. I got it uh, about less than a year ago, and I've got about 72, 7,300 miles on it already. I ride it all the time. Very pleasant motorcycle to ride. Very forgiving. Loads of low-end torque. Welcome to South Marnie. Loads of pull, lots of torque. You know, it does this kind of riding very well. Just a very nice place to be, you know. And look how easy this thing turns, just on a dime. We've got gravel all over right here, but uh, we'll be okay, right? <laughs> Has excellent brakes, 300 millimeter disc on the front with that dual piston vibrate caliper. A 270 disc on the rear. I like these things, I really do. I think we will go down the road just a little ways, just for the heck of it. It's not a race bike, but it's not a slouch either. It does fine. And of course you can do all kinds of things to hop them up. Not that they need it. I think I put a uh, cat delete pipe on mine and it really made a lot of difference. A very relaxing place to be. I call mine the Zen field because when I ride it, I just kind of, the world's problems just kind of disappear. When you're sitting right here, you can't really see the speedometer or the, you know, anything. You're just, you feel like you're going through the air without a problem to think of, by golly. Check it out, nice tight turn. A good friend of mine has a 350 like this and he and his wife both ride it frequently. He says it does fine up to about 60, 65. While I'm thinking about it, we're having another nifty 350 ride, June 29th. We'll start here at Baxter Cycle in Marnie about uh, meet here about 10 o'clock, probably leave by 10:30, and uh, the goal will be to try to be back. The goal will be to try to be back here by 4 or 5 p.m. So a nice little ride. I think the last one was 140 miles. I'm not sure what we're going to do for this one yet. We haven't picked a route out yet. We talked about doing the Lust Hills again. That's an absolutely beautiful part of Iowa. Hey, let's do the hilltop spin test right here. Check this out. This bike does it about the best. I love it. Next time you're in the mighty Metropolis of Marnie, Iowa, make sure you stop here at the derailed grill right there. That place right there. Try their Wahoo Burger, by golly. Best burger in Marnie. So sitting on this motorcycle, you sit about straight up and down. You lean forward slightly, not as much as you do in the Classic. The bars are a little taller. Your knees and your hips are about the same height, and your heels are about right below your knees. Pretty good seating stance. I do like it. Maybe a little more relaxed than the Classic is. As far as how this thing drives, rides and drives, I think it's a beautiful bike. I keep mine by the garage door. It's easy to push in and out of the garage. It's light, you know, it's a very low center of gravity. It's fun to ride around town. It gets through the parking lot very easy. I, uh, I took mine to get groceries last night. I've got big bags on mine. When you get on the two lane blacktops, it just does that like a breeze, you know, it'll, uh, It'll do that all day long, and it, and it loves curvy, hilly roads, you know. It's not a powerhouse, but it does have enough power. They just put new roads in here, and the gravel's still kind of loose. The interstate. I try not to go on the interstate with mine. Uh, if the wind's at my back and I've only got a couple miles to go, I might do it, but I certainly won't do it into the wind. The nemesis of this motorcycle is a steep hill or a strong headwind. Let's take a look at this thing in the mirror here. I think I said it had a 31.7 inch uh, seat height that's about 805 millimeters i've got a 30 inch inseam so here i am you know flat footing both sides very low the bike is so narrow works very well look how good that that thing is just a good looking motorcycle isn't it all that chrome and shiny and gold and those badges absolutely lovely and check out those bags in the back isn't that neat i like it baxter's added those One gorgeous hot rod. A very nice machine. I ride mine regularly. I usually get in the 60s. I've heard of people getting as high as the 80s, 80 miles per gallon. Not too darn bad, I'd say. One of the things about this bike that uh, keeps me from buying it actually is its looks. It's an incredibly good looking bike. 
it's got shiny paint, it's got pinstriping, it's got loads of chrome, and I tend not to keep my bikes very clean, so a bike like this would almost be a waste on a fellow like me. But if you're a person that wants an absolutely gorgeous bike, there's Motorcycle Park right there, by the way, this would be a good one to have. I just, I really like this thing. I am going to take my 350 Classic Camping pretty soon, and we're trying to work with Baxters to get ourselves a Meteor 350 set up with a windshield and bags to go on a moto camping trip you know 500 maybe a thousand miles you know round trip just to see how the bike does as a matter of fact get on your computers send uh, Jeremy at Baxter Cycle a note maybe on Facebook call him up I don't care and uh, let him know that's a good idea we'll get that done for y'all <laughs> I'm always looking for a good reason to go camping anyway what a gorgeous machine absolutely beautiful bike very well equipped I like how they have it now if y'all are in the market for a newer used Royal Enfield Triumph, classic British bike of any type, need parts, accessories, doodads, thingamajigs, stuff, gloves, jackets, like my beautiful Nervic jacket. I say that because I love that jacket. Helmets, anything at all, get yourself over here to Baxter Cycle, right there, in the mighty metropolis of Marnie, Iowa, or go to BaxterCycle.com, tell those folks that Fuzzy Biker sent you. Now it's a beautiful day out. I'm going to go hop on my motorcycle and go for a bike ride. Y'all do the same if you can. Life is good. Wahoo! Yippee-yay-yay! Yippee-yay-yo! Down the road we go! Beautiful, beautiful machine.